Hello, I'd like to give you an intuition about how the pumping lemma for context-free languages works. Uh, the first information first. Um, if you have a language that is context-free, it means that you that you can pump it. And if it's not pumpable, then it means that the language is not context-free. That means you can use the pumping lemma to prove that a language is not context-free, but you can't prove that it is context-free. And where this is not well-formed, it would be correct to write something like this. And defining that f is a property of being a context-free language, and g is a property of being pumpable, and a is any language. But I hope that this one is easier for you to remember. So, and if you remember what context-free languages are, then it means, well, at this point you may read a symbol and write something on the stack for it, and on this point you read another symbol um, and take one symbol from the stack away to to make that this one and this one has the same the same number of occurrences and of course it can be very complex for example like this and or this and to have very complex embedded dependencies in the context free language so and remember i you can't prove with the pumping number that the language is context free but i will use a context free language to make clear how the pumping lemma works and the language I'll use is a to the power of n b to the power of n with n greater or equal than 1 and well let's let's draw an automaton a, a push down automaton for it we'll have a we we'll have a, um, a spy, an initial state, and we'll read and where well, we read one a first. Then we have the the stack bottom symbol that we want to read, and we we put it back on the stack and add an a. So then we can count the a's we are reading. And here we'll have a loop where we read more a's and putting more a's on the stack and then any time we'll read a b and we will take an a away from the stack and putting nothing back and where well, we do it as often as we have B's and A's left on the stack. And finally, if we are done, we remove the, the bottom symbol and going into the final state. And of course, this automaton accepts both with empty stack and with final state. So. Um, yeah, and in the in the pumping lemma for context-free languages, we have a capital or a big N, and that N is different from that one because that is a variable that shows you um, at which number of occurrences A's and B's have, and the N in the pumping lemma is just a constant, and it has just nothing to do with the language. And even ha it has nothing to do with automaton, but let's pretend that n had something to do with the automaton and would be the number of states. And of course, in the pumping lemma itself, you wouldn't choose uh, you wouldn't choose a number for n. It would be just any number. But let's pretend that n would be the number of the states in the automaton. Then the pumping lemma tells you. 
well, for example, let me show you something first. If we have words that are shorter than n, for example, if we have ab, then the length of ab of the word ab is 2. And what the length means is that you can just, for example, take this transition and then take that on that transition and you reach every state first and you take um, every state one time and you you use every those transi transitions only one time. It's because the word is shorter than n and so the word is even shorter than the number of states in the automaton. But if you have a word longer than that that is equal for or, or equal n or equal the number of states or longer than the number of states, the smallest one in this language would be AABB. So the length of that word is 4. And if you if the automaton wants to read that word, you have to take this transition and then you have to go through a loop to read the, the second A and you reach those state Q1 the second time. And the same happens if you want to read the second B, then you have to, first you take that transition and reaching Q2 for the first time. And then you take that loop to read the other B and you reach Q2 for the second time. That means if you have any word that is um, equal or greater than N or the number of states, you have to go through a loop or you have to visit a state twice. So the pumping lemma says, if you, well, you need for any n greater or equal zero because, um, well, that's like it is. For any word that is part of the language, and the word has to be equal or greater than n, then the pumping lemma must hold. And it says that, well, that you can do a separation where the word Z um, is split into... Or of course, you can have another pumping lemma where the, um, where the letters are different, but it doesn't really matter. So, you can do a separation where the word Z, that's longer than N, it has a separation U, sorry, U, V... W, X, Y, and it says that um, Y and X must be greater or equal 1, and that means, well, Y and X, that will be the parts that are pumped, that will be the, um, well, that will be the parts in the loop. And of course, if you would have y and x and put both at, of them to be um, epsilon or to be empty, then you would, then you could um, pump every, and you could just pump every word from the language. So, and it also says you, you have the part v, x. Um, v, W, X, that's smaller or equal N. Oh, and I uh, forgot one thing. Um, it says Y and X have just to be greater or equal 1, and so that means one of them can be epsilon, and it's important because regular languages are also context-free languages. And so you, for a regular language, language you can put one of them to be an empty string and you can pump it as well with the lemma for context-free languages. So it's greater or equal 1 and not 2. So and for um, uh, VWX it has to be smaller or equal n and that's because of the thing I told you here before. Uh, let's just take an example to show it to you. Let's just take a word with 4a and 4b, let it be my word, z. 
And what those properties say is that you just need a word that's um, or a part of the word that's smaller or equal n and you will have um, the pumpable parts in it. For example, you can have just, well, you could have something, a window like, like this one, or you could have a window like that one and you don't really need a bigger part than n because um, you can find a window that is smaller or equal n where you have both pumpable parts in it because of the property I told you here, uh, I showed you here. So and then again it says, or not again, but also it says that you have any i greater or equal zero where you have those separation pumped you have u v to the power of i w x to the power of i y which is also in the language and let me mark it for you if you have those both pumpable parts in it you can just imagine that these are uh, two loops like we have here and that y may in this example would be the number of a's and if you just read one more a you need to read one more b so that the word will stay in the language so you have to pump v and x um, um, for the same amount so that the word will stay in the language so and well, I hope that made you clear. Well, for example, um, or, or just one more thing. Um, the pumping lemma says you just need one separation for a word that holds. It doesn't mean that they are, that every separation must hold. For every separation, the pumping lemma must hold. So in my example here, well, we could be two a's when I take a window like this one and x will be to b and if I would pump it or, or take um, maybe I, I take i as two then I would have two parts those two a's so I had four a's and two times those b's and I had four e's but it could it would also work to say that v is one a and x is 1b so it doesn't really matter it just needs one separation here yeah. two possible so that the pumping lemma holds but um, you just need one for that the thing works <laughs>